Hey, welcome back, you guys. Uh, let's take a look at how we would make uh, a logo in here. So the idea that we're going for is a some kind of logo or brand made up by you. So this is your logo or brand, not someone else's logo or brand, not one that already exists. Um, and the end product will be either a, a wooden laser cut or a sticker. Um, we'll think through what which one you might want to choose toward the end here, maybe in another video. Uh, but I want to show you the process of making something um, and how to use the pen tool. The pen tool is really important for this whole process. Um, and it's kind of a tricky tool, so let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to start by going to File, New, and I want my document to be set up for a six by six inch workspace. Um, I'm choosing six inches by six inches because um, I think that'll be a good fit for our laser cutter and our sticker cutter. Um, if I make it too big, uh, it won't fit in the cut area on those machines. Okay, so I want to make sure that all my work is done inside this area. Uh, I'll hold control and roll the mouse wheel in to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to trace a logo that exists already here. And I'm doing this as an example. Um, you guys are creating your own logo, but I just want to show you how you would trace something uh, with a pen tool. So I took this Nike logo from my desktop and I dragged it into Inkscape. And I'm just going to leave the options as they are and press OK. So here I've got this Nike logo here. It's a bit big for my workspace. I can grab this by the corner and shrink it down and it just, it, it will kind of get squashed and squished. Uh, I'll hit Control Z to undo that. If I hold Control, undo it, it will stay uh, proportionally the same as it was and just get bigger or smaller. So I'll go down to something like this. Uh, let's move it toward the center of my work area. And I think I'll start at the end of this E here. You'll notice that uh, I've got an image in here that's made up of pixels. This is called a raster image. Um, and you can tell that it's getting pixelated and fuzzy around the edges uh, because it's not made with vectors. We have to trace around it ourselves. Um, to create that image that can be resized and not get, not lose quality, um, and also that a machine can follow the path on. So if I start tracing this now, uh, the image is black and it will probably be a little hard to see my line that I'm using. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to go up to layer, choose layers, and I'm actually going to bring the opacity of this layer down. I'm just going to make it look a little fainter. It's actually a little bit more see-through. Um, and then I'm going to create a new layer by clicking this plus sign. And I'll name this one tracing. And above the current layer sounds great. I'll add it. Uh, make sure that I'm selected on my tracing layer here. And then the tool that I want is this one right here. It's called the Bezier Pen Tool. And I want to, I'm going to start with some straight lines here. So I'm going to click right here. And you'll see that I've let go of the mouse button, but it, I'm still connected to that first point I made. So I will go to the next point that I want to kind of enclose in my tracing right at this corner here. Click. Then go down here. Click. Click. Click click and I can scroll around without losing my pen tool path that I'm working on. So I'll go click, click, click. Uh, why did I choose the Nike logo here? Well, um, I want you guys to include text and some sort of image or symbol in your logo. And I felt like the Nike logo was a pretty good example of that where they've got some text, they've got the swoosh. 
Um, you'll also see how we do some curves, uh, which is one of the tougher things to do with the pen tool. Uh, so I think it's a pretty good example to show you guys. Um, I'm just kind of going around these letters here, uh, clicking at each corner so that my path keeps following that, and it's going pretty well so far. But now I get to an interesting point here where I'm at the swoosh, and I don't have really a perfectly straight line here. It starts to curve toward the end. And this part is more difficult to do with the pen tool. Um, at first, I can kind of assume, yeah, it's pretty straight. So I'll click to about here. But now I need to do a curve. And to do this, I need to do something different. I can't just, I don't want to do a bunch of little clicks along here because then I'll get kind of like a, a edge that looks more like a polygon. Like it's in a really old video game and they can't make a curved edge on it. So it's made up of all these little flat surfaces. Um, I don't want that. So I will uh, go ahead and click all the way on the other side of this curve over here, all the way at the point of this swoosh. And this is a very careful part here. So I'm going to click and I'm holding down that click and then dragging. You can see the line starts to bend and curve. And the more I pull it, the longer it, or the, the more it bends, I guess. And I'm trying to get it to match right up with that curve. Now this takes some practice. I've done this quite a bit, so it, I'm probably making it look pretty easy, but to get it to match up with this curve is gonna take a little bit of experimenting around. What happens when I when I go down here, when I go right, when I go left, how does that curve change? You're gonna have to practice with that a bit. Um, but I'll get it to about here and then I'll let go. And you'll see that now the other, now my next line, I'm not holding any buttons right now, but it's kind of making my next line be curved and I don't really want it to be curved how it's showing me. So I'm actually gonna hit enter here this point. You'll see I the all the tracing I did kind of fills in with this black line, uh, but it's put a little end point here. Uh, these are called nodes. And now I can pick up where I left off uh, without that curve getting in the way. So I'm, uh, I want to make sure and start my next line by clicking on the node. And then this is more or less a straight line. At this point, we've got a bit of a curve, so I'm going to click a little further down here and hold my click and pull it just a little bit out to match this curve. Something maybe about like that. Again, my one right after the curve is, is curved in a way that I may not want it to be, so I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'll pick up again here by clicking on this node clicking a bit further down and pulling, dragging until I get a curve that matches what I want here. That, I hit enter again, gives me a node at the end. I'll do that same thing again. I'll kind of click across and pull, enter, click on the node, got a pretty straight line here, I might just continue with straight lines for a bit, we'll scroll over without breaking our line, Okay, we get to the tip of the swoosh here, and it's not, not a super pointy end here. I might want to zoom in and do a little curve. So I clicked and dragged, and I pull, I'm pull. i pulling the curve out, hitting enter, and then continuing from where I left off. 
Uh, now you will make mistakes doing this, especially if it's your first time. Uh, Control Z is always your friend and you can undo any mistakes that you've made with that. Uh, remember, we're on we're on computers. It's gonna be okay. Um, you can always undo. There we go. Now I've come back around, and you'll notice my last click there. I clicked on the node that I started at. I, re I really want to be careful with that. I want to close that off uh, in a nice tight loop. Um, I don't want to want to click like a little bit away from that node because what that's going to end up with in the end is let's say we were using the laser cutter to cut this logo out and if the if the starting node and the ending point were even just a little bit off from each other you'd end up with that part not being cut in the wood and it would be stuck in the the original piece of wood you wouldn't be able to get it out we'd have to recut it It'd be a waste of materials uh, so let's zoom out and see what we've got so far okay we've got good portion of the K and the E and the swoosh, but we need uh, the center part to get cut out, so we'll do a quick triangle here. I'll do a click, 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 and here I am. I'm closing this loop. Remember being very careful here to close the loop, click on the endpoint. There we go. Now let's go over and do this I and the N really quick. We'll just zip around this eye here, click, click, and click, and we'll finish off with the N. Now you'll see something here, a problem that you'll prob. this is a really common problem to run into. I'm trying to do the corner of this N, but it's automatically jumping to try and connect to the corner of this eye. It thinks I want to connect there. I don't. Um, and that can be frustrating, but there's an option to turn that off. It's over on the far right side here. And it's called Snap Cusp Nodes. Um, and I can just click on that to turn it off. Now if I try and do this, you'll notice it's not connecting at all. And I can easily go around here without it trying to jump over to the eye and connect. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm showing you uh, the tracing of a, a logo here when I'm asking you to make your own. Well, why why are you tracing, Mr. McFarland? We're supposed to make it up ourselves. Uh, well, a lot of people might want to draw out their logo on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, bring it into this program, and trace it out. Uh, that's a really good, good option uh, if you don't feel like freehanding with a the tools in here. All right, I've traced out my logo uh, and I can turn off my original layer, see kind of what the path would look like by itself there. Zoom out a bit. And it's looking pretty good, uh, but I need to think about how this is going to finish off. Um, if I were to cut this as a sticker, um, or a laser cut, the N would be a separate piece from the I, which would be a separate piece from the rest of it. And that may not be what I want. Um, I might want them to all stay together. So we've got some options to think about here. Um, let me show you some examples in my next video, um, but I want to leave this here at this point. Um, we'll look at kind of how to finish things off and think about what we want to make in the next video. Thanks for watching.